you have them count up there, because we don't have that many more commercials left. I'm doing business on the air here. I read that uh, you believe the publishing field is going to be completely changed mm -hmm. in the next 15 years, that mm -hmm. you have a gizmo at home that you use for writing now, that, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it, it uses a computer. Tell about that. Yeah, well, I have a little home computer. It's a little Chromemco Z80, which you can buy from a, you know, from a California company, Silicon Valley, up in Santa Clara. And I type. Stuff goes up on a glass screen. If I don't like what I've typed, I type over it, and it puts what the new stuff in, and I can spread the lines apart and move paragraphs around. When I get it all done... Is this like the Xerox people advertise on television? Yes, a little bit. Mine's yeah. a little I, more IBM elaborate IBM has theirs. a system they call the Meg Card 2, which they sell for $10,000. Yeah, and this system will do essentially the same thing no, as it. mine is much more. The Meg Card system gets one page per card, and it's very hard to change things. I can move blocks of text around, and... I write something, well, that's pretty good, but it doesn't belong here. I can store it over yonder and later on insert it and that type of thing. When I get this thing all done, and it's on a record, it looks just like a phonograph record. It's a magnetic record. All right. I push a button, and an automatic typewriter types it out onto a piece of paper. I mail the paper to New York, where somebody hands it to a guy who sits there and types it all into a typesetting machine so that it goes back on a little record that looks just like mm. mine. <laughs> now, that's the first thing that's going to happen, is that nonsense of trusting the U.S. snail with the manuscript. <laughs> but let's, let's go further. Uh, most of what you read, you don't really want as a book. You don't really need the physical object. What you want is the information. Mm -hmm. We'll sell you now a gizmo that with no real difficulty to be connected to your telephone. The telephone company essentially links every house in the United States to every other. Mm -hmm. I do not see why it is uh, at all unlikely. In fact, I would say it is enormously likely that within 10 years, 20 at the most, when you want to read something that you're not going to keep, you're not going to store it, it's not going to be something you treasure, like one of my books. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of your first editions, right, right Jer? <laughs> yes. Um, you will simply dial a number, punch in what you want, it comes up on a screen, it can type out a hard copy if you want it, or it just pretends, and a screen doesn't have to be a great big television screen, there's no reason why it can't be, looked just like a book in the sense right. that you can hold it in your lap, and so mm -hmm. it doesn't even have yeah, to have wires. The Japanese wire. have, this, have yeah. found a very nice flat screen yeah. TV system now. Yeah. It doesn't have to have wires, and a royalty goes from your bank account to mine, what's the need of a publisher in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eliminate the middleman. Now, and, it's true that but, under those but, circumstances, but can, everybody will be writing books. But can you read at your own speed? Sure. Oh, yes. Sure. sure, you push the button when you want You tell it to scroll change. or not scroll. You can scroll by pages. Mm -hmm. My machine right now scrolls by pages if I want it to. I punch the, the zero on my keyboard, and now every time I hit the space bar, a new page comes up on it, and it sits there until I give it another. Or I can tell it to scroll, and it'll one scroll at, at a certain rate one line but at a time. But what if you're reading like an Irving uh, Wallace book, and you want to get to the good parts, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can, you can have the computer search for the good have, part. Oh, you simply yeah. pick out the word <laughs> you want it to look for, and it'll yeah, go I, right through. I love it. <laughs> Tom, I have my, my, my machine right now. I give it a keyword, and it will find every instance of that keyword. Now, oh, if I you're, a, if you you're a keyword freak, I have the electric pencil. That's the yeah. one we have on yeah. our computer, too, for writing uh, our book. It's got its problems, and Schreier hides its source, and we're writing one uh, that, that because we're writing one that will have a few less glitches than his. But, but Schreier's electric pencil is about as good as they come right now, uh, and it works very nice. Doggone. You know, I saw one once uh, uh, at an RCA exp uh, exhibition, they have a television set now that looks like a, a, a picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you hang it on the wall. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's about that mm -hmm. thick, okay? Yep. Now when you want to turn on television, the picture disappears and yep. you're watching television. Yep. How yep. do they do that? There's a couple of different ways. One is a plasma panel where they have tiny little glow discharge lights, like these little neon night lights. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. other technique is using liquid crystals, and they've done mm -hmm. more work with that in Japan. A third technique uses electroluminescence where they send acoustic waves bouncing back and forth mm -hmm. in the screen, and where the two waves overlap, you generate a voltage which allows a current to go through the thing and light up a phosphor, like these uh, cold night lights, the yeah. ones that glow bluish green. Correct. Well, Tom, it isn't going to... You, you will still have this show when they have 3D television. Oh, sure. They'll have holograms, and you walk around the room, and you'll actually see the viewpoint change as you walk around. Like, like they do down in, in, in Disneyland for the, for the ghosts and things. Right. That, 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 that's so, that is so easily done. It's just a matter of commercially 
producing yeah. it. Now, of course, no that takes a much wider signal, for television, you a know, lot more information than yeah. broadcast television. Yeah. That'll yeah. come to you over a glass fiber, a fiber optics cable yeah. TV. Uh, that won't come over the air unless it comes directly from a satellite with millimeter yeah. waves. Yeah. A normal TV wave might be anything from, oh, say, uh, 15 feet long to maybe so long. The sort of ways you need to carry holographic information because there's so much of it yeah. might be that long or even smaller. Yeah. Wow. And what happens to newspapers when you could, you probably can dial up the phone and Just hold your phone? Oh, yeah. Well, they already have that in England, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they have a, yeah, they they have have a news service, service subscription in England. It is relatively expensive now, but it will come down when you get a mass market for it. They already have it in England. Mm -hmm. now, it, 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 what, what, you know, what you, you used to use newspapers to wrap fish, but Mylar plastic mm -hmm. bags are so much better now <laughs> that you don't, you know, except to line the parrot cage, what do you want a newspaper for? I mean, you want the information. I in want it. the information. But you don't need the paper. In fact, it's a burden on you. Your wife's got to carry it out and throw it in the garbage. Well, I might want, might want to keep it around for a week to refer back to but, something I don't have time to read. But you can do that any time. The computer can do that. It can but either the computer retrieve. Can yeah. do it. it can either keep the record in magnetic yeah. form. You can put a whole novel on one of these little discs. Yeah. Or alternatively, it, it can go to a central data bank and get it. It takes about three to put a big novel well, on at the moment, but yeah, but like but that's 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 that's, yeah. that's what I've got now, and that's not double density yet. Yeah. Wow. Say, what is that? Uh, you brought a little calculator yeah. for some reason. Oh, I brought this thing to tell a story about it. Back in the early '50s, when I was an undergraduate, I was invited to go to the University of Illinois, and I had a hitchhike there, which in those days was a little bigger deal than it is nowadays, I guess, to see the world's biggest computer, the Iliac, and it was vast. It was in a field house. You walked down rows of vacuum rows, tubes. Yeah. There were two undergraduates whose total job was to run around with shopping carts full of vacuum tubes and pull the burned out ones out and put new ones in. In fact, it looked very much like Colossus in the Forbes mm -hmm. project. It really was that big. It was huge. And it was, at that time, the world's most powerful computer. I mean, it, time was scheduled for months and months in advance. Only governments could afford to, to, mm -hmm. to time on it. This is more powerful. Mm -hmm. And I can own it. I can put it in my pocket. I can carry it around with me. That I one own it. Millions. That one costs. Yeah, this is bucks two hundred and ninety dollars, and it's Ti's fanciest machine. It, you know, it little to little bubble gum cards and things, and it put programs in it and so forth. Has this little chip in the back of it with about two hundred programs in it. And it's like, like what? This is like a, a week's salary for somebody not terribly well paid. And, and it is more computing power available to me than, than, than the government had available to it in 1952. Well, we had the man in here who invented this little uh, game that the kids have now, and some grown-ups do, the computer game, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Merlin, mm -hmm. you know, where you punch oh, it all yes. in. He says, what used to take three buildings to hold yeah. is right here for $33. Right hands, That's yeah. unbelievable. That's right. uh, there is a device from Texas Instruments called uh, uh, the Speak and Spell, which pronounces words for the kids mm -hmm. and asks them... A lot of spell it, and if they make a mistake, it corrects them, asks them to try again. If they do it right, it encourages them. Mm -hmm. This this thing has one little chip in there, uh, the active area of which is about a quarter inch square. There's over 100,000 electronic parts on that. Now, when I went to MIT, the biggest computer around back then was the old 7094 made by mm -hmm. IBM, and that had about 100,000 parts. The thing cost several million dollars, and it required a room about as large as a studio for the air conditioning system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> that, that whole thing can now be put on one of these little chips. Mm -hmm. And you know what that thing sells for? $49.95, complete with a readout yep. that has both letters hey. and numbers and a keyboard. Hey, right. how come, then how come cars that used to cost $4,000 now cost $14,000? Why can't thank this... Thank the government for that <laughs> one. Yeah, th partly thank the government, but also notice that the motor in your car doesn't cost anything like that. Because the motor in your car is made by automatic lathes. The car is then hand-assembled by people who are not doing things a lot different from what they did in Henry Ford's day. Mm -hmm. But their you cost can, has gone up. Yeah, and, well, the cost of human labor is enormous. Well, which is, I mean, to some extent, you want to keep people employed. Yes, you do. And I want mm -hmm. to keep them well employed yeah. so that they can continue to turn that kind of product well, out. Well, I don't want to, yeah, and you want to make them rich. Now, you, you, your problem is, of course, you make the world rich, and space industries can do that, for instance. I mean, this nonsense about we're running out of energy and we're running out of oil, we're running out of metal. You know, the United States last year produced something like a... a all the ore that was mined to produce all the metal we produced make a ball something like half a kilometer in diameter, okay? There are several million asteroids bigger than that, 
and they are far better than three percent ore, which is what we're mining up in Massachusetts, uh, up in up in Minnesota. They're more like thirty and forty percent. I mean, hell, the moon oh, sure, was eight percent ore, and that's random well, samples. A good, a good nickel up iron asteroid is essentially pure nickel and iron. Yeah. I mean, you could yeah. really all you have to do is yeah. blow a little bit of oxygen through there to get yeah. the excess carbon out. You've got a good, high quality yeah. nickel steel. And we can go get them. We can do that with today's technology. Right, right. Now wait, hold on a second. I got to do commercials. We will continue after these uh, announcements.